Welcome back to What Stories Say with Seth and Seth. I'm Seth. And I am Seth. We're glad to be with you today. We're going to, uh, today we're going to be talking about um, the the book, The Goose Girl by Shannon Hale. Mm -hmm. And the song that I've chosen to be the um, theme song, and this is very specifically the theme song for the main character. Mm -hmm. um, and and the, the song I've chosen is Available Light by Rush. And just again, just a reminder, this is a, we're going to have a lot of spoilers in these uh, in these podcasts. So if you have if you if you if you don't like spoilers and haven't read the book, you probably ought to turn the podcast off. Otherwise, we'll go we'll go forward. One of the things I want to talk about, Seth, first of all, is just mm -hmm. um, because the, the first verse of this song really speaks to the the magic of the world. Okay. And and the magic of the main character. She's got mm -hmm. she got a very unique magical system in right. this in this book and, and the books that follow. There's a series of four books in this in this uh, what they call the Bairn books. Uh huh. And they have a very she has a very 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 interesting and, and very specific magical system. So it's not like a spell casting kind of wizardry. It's a mm -hmm. very nature based magic. And basically, the magic in these stories are different people are born with the ability to speak to different elements. So uh -huh. uh, our main character has the ability to speak to the wind and uh, or speak with the wind. Um, later we'll find later we find characters who are able to speak with fire and who are able to speak with water uh, or who are able to speak with, uh, like the trees and the and the you know plants and stuff, mm -hmm. and so her magic is a very natural magic. Now the, the the bad guy, the the main villain in this story, actually has the ability to speak with people, and they call that the, each of this. So so she has this. The main character has wind speak. Uh, the main villain has people speak, and and that means she the, the main character has the ability to coax the wind to do what she wants it to do. The main villain has the ability to coax people to do what she wants them to do. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, and then later on, we'll find other characters in the, later in the series who, who, who can coax fire, who can coax water, who can coax the trees, and, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, but they also, get, they also can hear these things. They can speak with and listen to and understand Right. So somebody with people speak has the ability to to both convince people to do what they want them to do, but also they're able to listen and understand people in a in a really profound way. Mm -hmm. And our main care our main character is able to listen to and understand the wind. Right. Now she has a she has a sub uh, a sub power that maybe a uh, 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 magical power that she has that she, is uh, bird speak mm -hmm. that she she can speak with birds as well. But that's um, that's not not really the main power, but it is the first one that she discovers. She, right. She first discovers her ability to speak with the uh, birds, and then and then she's able to eventually find that she can speak with the wind. Mm -hmm. And and there's a lot to the story, a lot to the story. Yeah. Um, I mean the the way that the that the magic is is written in this situation in a way especially in the first book doesn't even feel so much like it's written to be a strict magical system the way that you would expect in some other kind of fantasy novels it's it starts with uh with the main character learning to talk to birds and then as she like goes on in the story she's listening to the wind and wondering if she could learn to speak to it and so a big part of her storyline is figuring out how to do that and i don't think the book ever once calls it magic no no she doesn't she doesn't call it magic and, and it, it's more of a you know again like i say it's elemental speaking is what it is it's just an ability to talk to and speak with these elements and in the beginning she, it's her aunt who's teaching her how to speak with the birds, and her aunt tells her, 
you know, that there's this greater power which is speaking with the elements, but mm-hmm. nobody nobody has had that power, at least nobody has known has been known to have that power for, for a while. So that's this kind of almost like a, a dead um a a, a a a dead skill that has been lost to the world. Mm-hmm. Um but so 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 just just a really quick recap of the story. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, let's let we won't get into that yeah. because the the I book is a retelling of the uh, an old German fairy tale of the same name, the Goose Girl. Right. Um, so if you don't know the story of the book, it's not exactly direct, but it's it pretty closely follows the the plot of the fairy tale. So you can just look that up and it'll tell you exactly what happens. Right, exactly. <laughs> so I, I wanted to go through this this magical system, which you're right, you're right she doesn't call it magic, but I'm, but I'm calling it magic. Yeah, I mean I it is. I to go through that because we're going to talk really quickly. This first verse of the song um, really speaks to this, to this system, especially in relation to our main character. Mm-hmm. And the main character's name is... Uh, she's... So she she's a, a princess, and she has like a long princess name and a nickname that she goes by. But for most of the story, she's in disguise and goes by the name uh, Izzy or Izzy. Izzy. Right. I S I. Yeah. So and I and I call her Izzy. Um, mm-hmm. So 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 anyways, so let, let's just talk a little bit about the basic plot of the story, though. So so yeah. So Izzy is is a princess, and she's a princess of a of a pretty small nation, and. She's the oldest child in the kingdom. Mm-hmm. Her father and she get along really well. Her mother and she do not get along at all. Yeah. And her mother is wanting her to to show signs of, you know, this gentility princess and, and wants right. her to be public with people. Well, Izzy's not a very... Uh, she doesn't get along with people well. She struggles in, in social settings. And that's why she and her mom really don't get along. Now, her her dad is raising her to be the next ruler. Like, that's the oldest child, not the oldest son. Um, like, in in most historical kingdoms, the oldest son would, would become the next king, unless there was no son, and then the oldest daughter might become queen. Mm-hmm. In, in this case, just the oldest child is supposed to become the next ruler. So she's being trained by her father to be the queen after he dies um but her mother is kind of behind her father's back kind of preparing something else and so when the father unexpectedly dies he dies in a in an accident horse accident Mm -hmm. and then izzy is thinking she's going to be the queen but then the, the the her mother announces that her brother is going to be king and that Izzy has been betrothed to the to the prince of a neighboring kingdom, which is the largest kingdom, kind of the most powerful kingdom in the area. So she's going to be sent off to this kingdom to marry the prince of this kingdom. And of course, that just totally uh, no, she had no idea that this was being planned, and, and her father didn't either. This was kind of something her her mother had done, kind of behind the scenes. Right. Her mother didn't see her as a legitimate ruler and wanted, evidently kind of wanted to, to get her out of the way and get her brother, who who is more outgoing and and does well in crowds and, and mm-hmm. stuff, and, and she yeah. felt like he would be uh, better better fit that role. And so, so this whole time growing up, Izzy has also had her maid, her, her you know, maid in waiting. Mm-hmm. And this maid is actually very personable, very good with people, and, and the mother kind of likes the maid. And Yeah. But Izzy s- struggles uh, with the maid and the maid's mother and, and, and whatnot. So when Izzy is sent away, the maid mm-hmm. is sent with her. And right. so they're going they're, they're they're going from their country to this other country. It's going to take several weeks to get there because it's a long distance, and they got to, they have to go through the mountains and the woods and uh, to get over to this this other country where she's going to marry the prince. Mm-hmm. And along the way, as they're traveling, what we find is that this maid has 
brought with her her own entourage of soldiers and they're able to take over and force Izzy into a into a, a servitude position and, and they make this this uh, her maid in waiting uh, takes over her persona and becomes mm -hmm. becomes the princess in the in the traveling band and they actually yeah. they actually kill most of the most of the soldiers who, guards who were sent to guard Izzy um, and Izzy it does escape and 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 it eventually runs into a, a farmhouse and, and is able to kind of disguise herself as we talked about and then mm -hmm. she goes by Izzy and she's able to disguise herself and she's able to come to the palace and get a job as a goose girl watching watching the geese mm -hmm. um, and she's very good at the job because she speaks because as we've already talked about she can speak to she can speak to animals and to birds and yes uh specifically to birds um anyways then the the the, the rest of the story goes with her taking care of the geese getting to know the 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 other palace workers um and and gradually learning how to speak with the wind learning how to understand the wind learning how to how to uh persuade the wind to do what she wants it to do um there's a particular case where the 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 boy who's also a goose boy who she's kind of apprenticed to mm -hmm. um, and he's kind of he's kind of frustrating and annoying um and there's a, a point where he she gets the wind to blow his hat away and he's chasing it and he can't Mm -hmm. um, yeah, can't get it because the wind keeps playing with him, and, and she's convinced it to do that. And that, that's kind of early on. And then there's a point where um, there's some I don't even remember now some bad guys who come, and she's able to convince the wind to help fight these these guys off away from away from the herd of geese and away from herself. And so she's learning to be able to, and she doesn't she doesn't control the wind. That's an important aspect of this story. She. Mm -hmm she persuades the wind she can ask the wind to help her but she doesn't control it she right. can persuade it and um and then and and then this this uh, maiden waiting who now is impersonating her is also in the castle but as the princess and is preparing to marry the prince mm -hmm. and and as the story goes on she gets to know the prince a little bit because the you know you know how stories go um, right and eventually, there's a there's a standoff in the end where she the she comes and confronts her maid in waiting, and is able to use persuade the wind to help her, and and they end up you know defeating this maid in waiting, who has this people speak. That's why she's able mm -hmm. to do all this because she has people speak. She's able to convince people of what she wants and persuade people to do what she wants them to do and, and whatnot. And in the end, uh, Izzy is able to defeat this this maiden waiting using using the wind uh, that she's learned how to communicate with. So mm -hmm. this this song that I've chosen is a little bit different from the other songs that we've that we've gone over because most of the other songs we've gone over have been like story songs mm -hmm. yeah. and told the story all the way through. This one does not do that. This one is more of a theme song because it represents Izzy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that makes sense for this story, though, because um, while like the, the the story is an important part of the book, um, but it is a relatively straight retelling of a, a classic fairy tale, which means the story itself is actually relatively simple mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, a lot of the the expression of the story of, of the book, a lot of what makes it really great is just the time that the author, Shannon Hale, takes to describe everything that's happening, especially in uh, Izzy's relationship with uh, her magical powers that she's developing and learning to speak with the wind and stuff like that that it's all like very uh very beautiful prose that mm -hmm. that uh feels almost poetic and it, it just 
takes time that can almost make the story feel slow at times, but it's it's because this is a book where the story isn't the only point. The experience of of uh, that poetic feeling of learning to understand the wind with her is a big part of what makes it a great book. Right, and, and this is this is a kind of book that I think of more of a what I think of as a character growth book than a than a story plot book. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and that's not to say that it doesn't have a plot, and it does, and it's got a good story. But like you say, it's a very simple story, and it and it and but it's it's really more of a character driven book where we're mm-hmm. really it's the development of the character of Izzy as she goes along. So let's go ahead and start talking a little bit about uh, the 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 song. And the song starts out, and just just listen to the things that we talked about, and you can hear what I, why this song is so so applicable to this story. Mm-hmm. It says the restless wind has seen all things in every kind of light, rising with the full moon to go howling through the night. The sleepless wind has heard all things between the sea and sky, in the canyons of the city. You can hear the buildings cry, which is just poetic. I mean, yeah, that's just such such a poetic song. Anyway, the yeah, it definitely like fits the story of the book tone wise. And you know, it's, it's interesting. The restless wind, and that's one of the things about this story that you realize is that this the wind is restless. The wind is not like it's not gentle and and just this sweet mm-hmm. thing. It's a very restless thing in the story. And, and to understand it, it's in, in the beginning she can only understand bits and pieces because it's so restless and it's always moving and it's hard for her to, to keep keep it going, right? So, but it also has seen all things because the wind goes everywhere, so she can talk to it and like learn um, like all kinds of things about what's going on because the right. wind knows it's it's seen everything around right. what's and going as, on around and her. And as she's getting to know how to how to communicate with the wind, she starts learning things. In fact, it's the wind that warns her that these guys coming to, you know, uh, this kind of almost a gang of guys coming to, mm-hmm. and I don't remember if they're coming to get her, or they're coming to what they're coming to do, but they're coming over, and, and the wind actually warns her that this right. is happening because it's it's moving and, and it knows all things. Um it, and I love how it says in every kind of light, right? Day, mm-hmm. night, doesn't matter. Rising with the full moon to go howling through the night. And then it goes on, the sleepless wind has heard all things between the sea and sky. In the canyons of the city, you can hear the buildings cry. And that's, again, it's just, she's being able to hear. And that's what the thing, mm-hmm. in the story, that's what the wind is doing. It's just telling her bits and pieces of things that it's seen, that's passed by, it's, you know, and that's why I say you can hear the buildings cry because as the wind goes through those buildings, it carries that image with it and whispers those things to her. Mm-hmm. And it goes on. Um, this is the, the chorus. Oh, the wind can carry all the voices of the sea. Oh, the wind can carry all the echoes home to me. Oh, the wind can carry all the voices of the sea. Oh, the wind can carry all the echoes home to me. And that's exactly what we're talking about. That's that's, mm-hmm. I mean, that's an ex- explanation of her power. Yeah. This wind carries all the echoes of everything that it's seen to her. Mm-hmm. And she and it's able to tell her about what it's seen and what it's what you know, it's passed through and so the whole chorus is just that whole idea. Yeah. That the wind carries things to her. Um, then it then it goes on. Run with wind and weather to the music of the sea. All four winds together can't bring the world to me. Chase the wind around the world. I want to look at life in the available light. And and to me, this is this is the the one that really goes back to the idea that she's she's lost her world, right? Yeah. She was the princess, absolutely, and she's lost that. Uh, to to her maiden waiting, who now is is impersonating her, so it says, uh, run with wind and weather. So she's learning how to do this, right? Mm-hmm. To the music of the sea, all four winds together can't bring the world to me. She's saying, mm-hmm. I'm, even though I have this ability, I can hear, I can, but the, all of the winds together 
can't can't restore me back to my back mm-hmm. to my. They point. can't magically make everything better. Right. So then it says, "Chase the wind around the world." I want to look at life in the available light, and to me, that's the whole thing about this book. She's trying to figure out who she is. Mm-hmm. I want to look at life in the available light. So she's like, "Who am I? Am I a goose girl? Am I a princess? Am I something in between? Am I, uh, you know, I, I, I can speak to the wind, I can speak to the bird, but what does that mean?" Mm-hmm. And I think that's the whole point of this whole story. Yeah, and she wants to see see it in the available light because uh, there's there's only so much of that understanding of of herself and who she is that can really be illuminated at once for her with everything else that she has to deal with and um, all of all of this. There's uh, there's only so much that is available for her to to be able to understand even with with all of the information that she can get about the outside from the wind she doesn't have any magical way to understand herself right right and so and so i love i love that that end of the course there and i want to look at life uh, with through the available life mm-hmm. um the second verse kind of plays on this idea of having lost uh, her her position as the princess. Mm-hmm. So it says, play of light, a photograph, the way I used to be, some forgotten stranger doesn't mean that much to me. And mm-hmm. I, that's exactly, I mean, it, she, a play of light, a photograph, the way I used to be. This is this memory of being her the past. princess in this mm-hmm. land, her father preparing her to be the queen, yeah. So, it's a play of light. It's like a photograph, the way she used to be. But at this point, it's just some half-forgotten stranger, and it doesn't mean that much to me mm-hmm. because she can't go back. And she's There's been to go back too. Yeah, and she's been living in this new life for long enough that she almost can't imagine what it would be like to go back at right. this point. Yeah, exactly. So, so she's so 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 really this this memory that she's looking back. It's almost like looking back at her at her previous life. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it says, uh, "Trick of light, moving picture, moments caught in flight, make the shadows darker or co- or colors shine too bright." So again, now we're going back. Now I I think we're seeing she's. We're going this back and forth thing, right? Uh-huh. Who am I? She's trying to discover herself. So it's a trick of light, a moving picture, right? Moments caught in flight. So and, and again, think about moments caught in flight as those as the wind comes, it gives her pieces of information, right? These mm-hmm. moments caught in flight, but nothing nothing concrete there. Yeah. And then it says it makes the shadows darker or the colors shine too bright. And so and so either being being the goose girl and stuck where she is, it's it's like it's it's like a shadow that keeps getting darker and darker. It's, mm-hmm. This this is not who she is. Or going and confronting the maid and, and, and taking her rightful place, the colors shine too bright. Mm-hmm. She's she's never been good in crowds. She's never been good with people. And and so I think there's this is she gonna stay in the shadows as a goose girl? Mm-hmm. Or is she going to go either way? It's in her in her mind right now. Either way is a bad choice. Right. She she's so and so. It's it's an, it's an interest. I, I love these lines because it just it just goes to her character so well again. Yeah. And it goes on. Oh, the light can carry all the visions of the sea. Oh, the light can carry all the images to me. And I and to me, this is now her. She's. We're going back. We're remembering my my, my childhood. Remembering who I was. Um, I'm I'm uh, I'm also you know, it, it's I, I see who I am now, and I know who I was supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Right. So she's got these three images. The light I like to think of as as in terms of of uh, you know like bringing things to light. Right. Exactly. Light yeah. As in understanding. So the light can carry all the visions of the sea. Oh, the light can carry all the images to me. So she's got these three different images in her mind, right? Mm-hmm. 
this is who I was, this is who I am meant to be, and this is who I am today. Yeah. And and all so so that's that's what she's got now. All this light, all this information. Mm -hmm. It says, run to light from shadow. Sun gives me no rest. Promise offered in the west, bro I mean, in the east, broken in the west. Chase the sun around the world. I want to look at life in the available light. So I, I would say um, this feels like she's starting to. Uh, this is kind of at the point in the story where she's starting to want to uh, to regain some sense of the. Um, identity that she had she's wanting to yeah. she's she's starting to actually finally uh recognize that she needs to um move forward and do what she can to uh fix the problems that that have happened instead of just uh living with them i think uh part of that part of that happens in the story when she st starts to actually get to know um the prince the prince yeah. uh, and starts to actually fall in love with him and suddenly she's not completely content with just being a goose girl right and, and so and so you're right it says run to light from shadow so shadow we, is, is representative of being the goose girl mm -hmm. light is representative of being the princess essentially yeah right so run to light from shadow but then Sun gives me no rest. Again, being out in the open with people, she's never been good at that. She doesn't like that. But uh -huh. so, so I think there's th that's a sign of 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 the discomfort that she feels mm -hmm. being out in the light like that. Mm -hmm. So run to light from shadow. Sun gives me no rest. Promise offered in the east, broken in the west. I think that just goes back to to she was promised to the prince to be the princess, mm -hmm. married to marry him. It was promised when she was at her own in her own land, and then she and then she went from her land, uh, from 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 her land in the east. They went west over the mountains mm -hmm. to his land, but that promise was broken in the west because she's betrayed and right. Yeah. So chase the sun around the world, right? That's what mm -hmm. she's doing now. Like you said, she's, she's mm -hmm. ready. She's gonna chase the sun. She's not gonna she's not gonna live in sh in the shadow anymore. So chase the sun around the world. I want to look at life in the available light. And I think the available light is becoming more available, right? She's getting yeah. more information, more knowledge, more. So now she's more ready to make a decision. And that decision is, I'm going to go, I'm going to go make this, this mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Um, and then we, we come back to the, the first chorus. So the wind can carry all the voices of the sea. The wind can carry all the echoes home to me. We're being reminded of that. Um, ability that she has that she's going to to make use of at least to some degree to uh, in in the kind of finale of the story to uh, help her restore her position. Right, right, and then and then from there it goes on and again it continues that that chorus. All four winds together can't bring the world to me. And I think this that's a realization. I have to act. I can't. Yes. This isn't going to just happen. Shadows hide the play of light so much I want to see. Of course, the shadow being, you know, her role as a goose girl rather than her role as a princess and her role yep. as a goose girl. Absolutely. And those shadows are hiding the light. The light that she wants to see. And, and, and the light that she is, that she is the princess. Mm -hmm. Being, the, being the, 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 this, this goose girl is shadowing her role as a princess. Right. And it's hiding it. So it's the disguise. She said, and then she says, so much I want to see. Chase the light around the world. I want to look at life in the available light. So we, we come back to that. Um, mm -hmm. And then I, I do like, you know, the, and, and that's, so, so she now knows what she's going to do. She's going to confront this, this maiden waiting. She's going to make things right. And then it says, I'll go with the wind. And that's exactly what she does, right? When she goes to confront this maid in waiting she mm -hmm. goes with the wind she's convinced it to go with her to help her and then it says oh the wind can carry in the available light i'll stand in the light mm -hmm. so, that's, so it's, that, that's that moment where it feels goes. yeah and then this kind of repeats uh that part of the chorus with those four lines kind of in in slightly different orders but right. kind of repeating and fading through the rest of the song and i think that really 
kind of represents, I would say, like her desires and her what what she's the conclusion that she's come to of who she wants to be and what she wants to do at the end of the story. I'll go with the wind. She's she's uh, formed this kind of magical bond with uh, the wind that's a part of her now. The wind can carry carry all of this information, all of the um, the things that she wants to know and learn, and then in the available light, I'll stand in the light. She wants to go and stand in that light and become what she was meant to become and regain the thing that was taken from her right. and uh, be with the prince and all those things. So it, it really feels like this speaks to her desires that create the final part of the story when she finally realizes this is really what I want. Right, and she also realizes, um, you know, I love how it says the wind, because above here it says, you know, the wind can't, um, all four winds together can't bring the world to me. But then in this part she says, I'll go with the wind. Mm -hmm. Oh, the wind can carry. So the wind can't fix everything for me, but the wind can help. The wind uh -huh. can come with me and it can carry me. And then she wants to, uh, in, in, in the available light, so in the knowledge of who she is, I'll stand in the light. This is that, that I'll stand in the light to me is that re revelation. Where yeah. She's revealing to everybody, I'm going to stand here and tell you the truth. Yeah. Um, so so that's that's basically the song, and I just I feel like it just fits the character so well. Both both you know the magical. I mean it, the the magical power that she has. Of, of communicating with the wind is so obvious in the story but mm -hmm. I think the first time when I first listened to this song I thought oh at least the first verse really fits her and then I and then when I read the read uh, listened really closely through that second verse about about light and pictures and, and photographs I thought oh that is exactly her story of, mm -hmm. of losing one identity being given a new identity losing that identity Having to take on a shadow identity, and then, and then, and then coming back out into the into the light and revealing the truth. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah. I, I, that's where I think this song is just really accurate to the story. Absolutely. So this, this so this is uh, available light by Rush, and and the and the book was the Goose Girl by Shannon Hale. Mm -hmm. um, Next week, Seth will have our will have our book and song. But what we want to do in the future, if anybody if anybody listening would like to submit a song and book or character, we would love to hear it, and we will uh, and we would love to go over it here on the podcast. And Seth and I will discuss your choice of theme song for a favorite literary or movie character. 